Belko experiment. Okay, this movie is directed by Greg McLean, who also did such films as Red Hill, uh, The Darkness Rogue, and Wolf Creek. So he's done a lot of underground horror films. And I gotta say, this movie is probably one of the most uh, creative and unique horror movies I've ever seen in my entire life. Because usually, horror movies don't get my attention anymore. It's just, I don't know, it's just there's just not really good horror movies out there that are creative. Because this movie has a, uh, if you guys ever seen movies like Halloween or, or uh, the Friday the 13th movies or whatnot, uh, they, they try to find creative ways to kill people on the movie. And I got to say, this movie is probably pretty sick in, in that aspect because it finds creative ways in killing. There's there's a lot of decapitations on this movie, a lot of a lot of head crushing on this movie. So, okay, the Belko experiment takes place at uh, 80 uh, employees in uh, a company known as the Belko Corporation are just, they're having a normal day. They're just having a normal business day. And it all of a sudden, a voice co comes over the intercom, and ev the doors are locked, and they have to. All of a sudden, they're plunged into this game, this sick game of, of, of a, ga a game of death of sorts, if you will. They have to kill at least several dozen employees within uh, an hour or 30 minutes, or else they will they will kill at least 50 employees. So this movie begs the question: What would you do in a situation like that? What would you do in a situation like that? Most people would probably panic. And it would, I think really uh, the director actually had a nightmare. Uh, he dreamt this movie. Uh, I read about it. And he had a dream about this movie uh, about a guy that uh, gets trapped inside of a corporation and people have to start killing each other because there's uh, somebody that's um, controlling them to do that. So pretty sick guy if you really think about it. And... Um, also, uh, starring uh, Tony Goldwyn, if you guys remember, he's done uh, movies such movies as Ghosts, as well as uh, other good movies of that same genre, as well as Adria or Jana and Michael Rooker. Uh, Michael Rooker is always a delight to see on any movie I've seen. And of course, John McGinley and John Gallagher Jr. John McGinley really is a douchebag in every movie he comes on, so he's playing a douche for 20 years. Uh, the same thing goes for Tony Goldwyn, because really... Okay, so they are the main villains on this movie because the main villains are not the people that are doing this, even though they are a bunch of sick people for doing this. Uh, but the main villains on this movie are Tony Goldwyn and John C. McGinley because they are the ones that incite the uh, the carnage to begin. Because there's actually a lot of a lot of deaths on this movie that are unintentional; they were done by mistake, and and so it it. There, uh, it's a, it, like I said, it begs the question: What would you do in a situation like that? Probably panic. God knows. Uh, probably, who knows? A lot of us probably might do the same thing. I'm, I'm, I'm being honest here. I'm just saying it's a pretty sick movie. But I, what I like about this movie, it is probably one of the most unique horror movies I've seen in quite some time. And I really think uh, this movie definitely uh, it's such a, a cliché uh, uh, with horror movies right now. It's so cliché right now with horror movies, so you don't really get to, uh, a chance to enjoy something that's a little bit different. It's not a zombie movie. It's not ex necessarily another Jason Flick or Freddy Krueger or anything like that. But And as far as the ending is concerned, the ending is a pretty sick ending. I mean, after everything that's happened, uh, uh, the everybody, uh, you get to see the villains get what they deserve. Basically, that's the payoff for this movie. You get to see the villains of this movie, including the owner of this company, who actually happens to be deformed, and he decides this uh, just sadistic experiment in the, his own corporation. And we, uh, I'm going to tell you, if you guys haven't seen this movie, I don't. I, spoilers coming up. If you haven't seen it, pretty sick ending. I, I probably one of the absolute best ending uh, plot twists I've ever seen in any horror movie uh, in my entire life. So I just want to talk a little bit more about the killings of this movie. So the killings are a lot of it is uh, they use a whole lot of uh, different just kind of scenarios where it's kind of like a accidental killing, and also they use a lot of there's a lot of headshots in this movie. It, the, the gore on this movie is pretty sick, and including the elevator death, including the a lot of the deaths with the head or heads are being bashed completely in. It looks it, it looks pretty grotesque, and that's where this movie really. 
It's not where it really delivers on all fronts. And what what this movie, what makes this movie unique is just that, that creative, nightmarish concept of one director, Greg McLean, and is brought to life on the big screen. And I really, as far as the characters are concerned, you can't really get into them at all. You do you do kind of feel sorry for people. I mean, people are getting killed. They're they're forced to kill each other. So it really it, it begs the question: under pressure, what would people do? It probably be a lot like that so it um i'm gonna i i gotta say that about this movie that it's it's pretty it's it's a pretty sadistic and cold, cold calculating thriller of a horror movie and um like i said at the i want to talk about the ending now okay the ending is just it after everybody's dead because the girl uh the latino girl you think she's gonna be a uh make it through because the guy uh mike the, the one of the main protagonists of this movie is able to kill the uh, Tony Goldwyn, and he gets they, basically the bad guys get to get what they deserve, and he he's able to bash his head in, and he, when he's finally getting out, the girl gets shot, and it, it, I mean after every this whole ordeal, what he's been through, the guy is completely exhausted. The guy's completely out of his mind practically, and he finally he's able to get out of the building, and he somehow. Uh, uh, keep in mind, at one point in the movie, the, the survivors try to get out, and there is uh, the company itself uses armed soldiers to keep them in there, so they're able to shoot somebody, some people down, gun people down, to, so they'll stay in for the the Belko experiment. So that's pretty sadistic eh, if you really think about it. This is a situation that could actually happen in real life. God, I hope not. But like I said, this is this is not a zombie movie. This is not per se uh, an invincible slasher killer movie. This is actually a more a little bit more reality based type situation. What could happen? What might happen? Why it actually happened? So uh, that's what really um, sets this movie apart from other horror color horror films I've seen in my entire life. So the guy gets out. He he finds out the the owner of the company is this deformed guy, and he just decided to do this, and so he. He's able to, um, he, he wants, he wants basically the survivor to tell him, how does he feel about the whole ordeal? How does he feel? Well, let's see. He kills the guy, he kills his henchman, and when he steps out of the building, you can see a, a whole bunch of video camera spoilers here, if you haven't seen this movie. Um, at the, at the exact moment he's getting out, he, the guy's completely exhausted, he's out of his mind already, and there, you can see a bunch of people getting out the exact same moment. So the Belko experiment was actually something that took place in a bunch of different uh, of the same company in different buildings in different locations, different parts of the world. So that that is a pretty that's what <laughs> that's the sickest ending I've ever seen on a movie. So if you haven't seen the Belko experiment, um, watch it at your own risk. This movie's pretty sick though. But like I said, what I, what got my attention is. The creativity of one sadistic director's mind, and like I said, uh, all right, I'm gonna give this movie, I'm gonna give this movie a B plus because it is um, that sadistic. Okay, if you like this video, like, please like this video. If you ever seen the Belko experiment, like this video. Comment below. Let me know what is your favorite plot twist of a movie that you didn't see coming at left field or anything like that. Let me know in the comments below. Please comment on this video. Share this video. Subscribe to this blog. Let people know about Lewis Bounds' Cinema Review. I am your reviewer. And I am in your face. I am goofy, okay? And I, I do this for you guys. You guys are awesome. You guys rule for staying subscribed and subscribing to my uh, my blog, all right? Help me reach that 2,000 subscriber uh, so I can give you guys better content. All right, you guys. I will see you guys real soon. All right, peace out.